This is Jessica, y'all. She's sick. She helps so much with the show. Welcome to set, first day. My guest tonight made history as the first disabled person to not only run a show on Netflix, but star in it. And that is everything to me. You know him from his memoir and his Netflix show special. Please welcome Ryan O'Connell. Oh my God, honey. fabulous. Like, thank truly you. fabulous. Oh my God, human touch, we love to feel it. We love to feel it. Come oh, on in, welcome thank to you. My, my crib. Oh Let's my take God. a seat on the couch. Um, the tailoredness of this suit, though. Thank you. Well, I really wanted to have, like, you owe me an eight ball of Coke energy. <laughs> and I think I have that. <laughs> now, I have heard that you have a pretty epic coming out story. And you know me, I only wanted this show for the gays. I was like, let's... For the, for the gays, for all the people to come out here and tell their gay stories, I want to hear your iconic coming out story. Thank tell you. Me. Wow, and a gay a gay story with no trauma. Can you believe? <laughs> Who so would have thunk? We all know that I think gender reveal parties are problematic and like actually deadly. Yes. Um, so I had a sexuality reveal party. You know, I'm, I'm a trailblazer. So I realized you only come out once if you do it correctly. And so I came out like via appointment to all my first tier friends, but okay, then nice. that became like a lot of emotional labor. She oh, was yeah. tired, she needed to lie down. So much work. Yeah, so then I was like, okay, like let's expedite the process mm -hmm. and like let's do a like actual party so all my second and third tier friends can come. And so I had my friend Katie like make a little video where we're slow dancing in my bedroom and she goes in for a kiss and I turn away and I'm like, no, I can't. And she's like, why? I've had feelings for you for so long. And I'm like, because I'm gay, bitches. You know, like turn to the camera. <laughs> like she, I, she, I was milking it. Like I was absolutely milking it. And then the crowd went wild. Everyone was obsessed. And then I gave everyone like, like, um, like Spencer's gifts in the mall, like the penis pasta, like all these like phallic stuff and little gift bags. People got Lupe? Yeah, babe. I mean, oh. I wasn't around. Do you know what I mean? Damn. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I'm sure you hear the headline a lot. Made history for a single yeah. person to run a show on Netflix and yeah. star on it. How do you feel about that that title? And that responsibility. Um, it's exhausting and overwhelming. Yeah. I mean, I feel like this is not my choice. I feel like I'm labeled political and an activist just by opening my mouth. Right. Just because I moved through the world with the confidence of Rob Schneider in the late 90s. Mm -hmm. And I feel like, and I feel like that's not something <laughs> I like necessarily wanted. I think yeah. like representation sweats are a very real thing. Right. Like I remember when I was making the special, I knew that I was speaking all of a sudden for a large swath of the population, which I could never do. Because mm -hmm. obviously everyone knows when you're creating a story, you can only speak to your own truth. You can't try to like appeal to everybody. Luckily, the response was really positive, but I think it's like deeply embarrassing that we're in this world where like I am making history as a disabled person. Like I, I, I feel like by law, I have to attend a representation panel in Hollywood once a week. Mm -hmm. And I'm so <laughs> tired of it because yeah. quite frankly, like I, I also can't move the needle that much. Like the gatekeepers of Hollywood are like people named Tim that live in like Redondo Beach and are like 55 and straight white males. And like those- Tim, <laughs> we're calling you out. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and so I, I feel, I find it to be kind of annoying that we're always having to talk about our identities. Yeah. But oh my the God. nature of the biz, babe. Oh, show biz, baby, we love it. <laughs> I love that you bring that out because I, I tried to explain this to people in season one where everyone was like, Oh, you know, a bunch of skeptics online would be like, stop talking about your sexuality or, or being brown. And I'm like, if I open my mouth, I'm doing that because it's who right. I am. Like, I don't know how to control that. Right. I just also think, like, because there's, we've been taught as marginalized people that there's so many, like, narrow slots and only so many seats at the table. Mm -hmm. So that if someone gets a seat at the table, people will obviously feel resentful because they feel like their opportunity is gone. Mm -hmm. But I really just, like, want to bomb the old table. Like, yes. the legs are shaky and I'm about, I'm there, like, the chair's about to break. Absolutely. So I'm just like, can we make our own new table of, yes. like, gorgeousness? And, Let's do that. And not have this like feast or famine mentality, yes. which is just like, I feel like we're like pitted against each other. Like it's all part of like the patriarchy yes. and like ableism <laughs> and like whatever, liberal art school vibe, but yeah. like it's true. She doesn't even go here. <laughs> yeah, it's true. <laughs> so you are on the, we have nothing in common, second and final season of Special. Yeah. Tell me your thoughts, how do you feel? I mean, you know, I wasn't like loving it at first when mm -hmm. I heard that, I, I call it renancel because we were renewed and canceled at the same time. Um, but I will say from a storytelling perspective, I was able to really craft like a real final season. Mm -hmm. I think I would have been like very much like Rude Boy by Rihanna that like I was like leaving it in an unfinished place. Yeah. So I feel I feel very complete. Also, this show took literally forever to get made. We pitched it in 2015. Everyone said no, no, and no. Finally, four years it took to get made and then two years in between season one and two because of COVID. So like in a lot of ways, like this show is amazing, hashtag grateful, but it's been like kind of a bad boyfriend vibe. Oh yeah. And like I'm ready to kind of 
move on to the next thing a little bit. Um, I want to talk about special though because it is loosely based on your own experience. Yes. And it has been, you know, there's a lot of conversation about how it's pushed the needle forward for gay sex on screen. So, yeah, yes. I know. But is that something you were expecting? Is that what you set out to do? Honey, I will die on this gay sex hill. <laughs> I will push this <laughs> lube filled rock up that damn mountain. I, I swear to God. Wait for NBC standards and practices. I know. To watch they're like, interview. beep, 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 beep. I'm like, don't silence me. Another marginalized person. <laughs> <laughs> um, basically, like, uh, I feel like gay sex existed in these two categories. I feel like it's either like shattered in secrecy, like come around campfire tent vibes, like mm -hmm. you spit, or like closeted, or it was like highly eroticized porno vibes. Right. And so, I mean, unless I've been having sex wrong, which I don't think I have, I, that's not been my experience. Correct. At correct. All. So, so I, I, I'm like, wait. I remember watching girls and kind of being revolutionized by like the honesty of the straight sex, mm -hmm. and I was just like, wait, like why hasn't that gay sex has never gone the treatment? Because gay sex is like so many things. It's like awkward, humiliating, empowering, sexy, not sexy. Mm -hmm. Like it's messy. It's all the things all within the span of two minutes. Right. So like I just wanted to kind of show it as I've experienced it. <laughs> Groundbreaking. <laughs> for watching this clip and thank you even more for supporting the underdog if you want to subscribe to this channel you can click right over there for more clips just like this one that are hilarious you can click right over there hopefully if someone did their job those things are there we'll see